Hi, this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville. And today I am gonna let you in on a little secret. You have to promise not to tell anyone. Yes, your Bernina can hem your pants. And I'm gonna show you just how to do that. So we're gonna do a blind hem on a pair of trousers that I have had for a number of years. And they're gonna be super easy to do. This is a nice, like soft material. And you know, hey, it's time to start wearing some normal pants, you know, instead of your pajama pants, because we're kind of getting out of quarantine and all of that. So it's time to hem these babies. Now, I'm gonna do a blind hem today, but hemming garments is pretty easy. You just wanna put them on, kind of decide where you want them to hang. Do you, are you gonna be wearing a heel? Or are you gonna be wearing flats with them? You, you know, how do you want them to do? So I'm gonna use a serger and we're gonna use a Bernina B790, but you could do this technique with any machine that can do a blind hem. All right, are you ready to hem those pants? So I've had these pants in a laundry basket in my cutting room for close to 10 years. And I just, I hemmed them once. And then I guess I didn't factor in the, the, the length correctly and they were still a little too long. So then I chucked them and just said, forget it. These aren't gonna happen. But now I wanna wear them again because I'm running out of pants because I've worn out all of my pants and now it's time to just replenish the wardrobe. So. So I'm gonna use just any ruler, honestly. These are an inch and a half folded up. So that means I need to factor in an inch and a half hem. I'm just gonna serge these with a gray thread and sew them up with a gray thread. And I actually, this is the spot right here that they need to be folded to on me. So I will take a pin and pin this and then make the adjustments all the way around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo my previous hem, press that out, and then measure and trim. So here is where I want the fold of my new hem to be, just there. So that means that I'm gonna have to pick out my original blind hem, which is no big deal. So I'm just gonna go through and grab those little threads and just go around all the way around each cuff and make sure that everything gets picked out. Then I'm going to press and then I'll come back and meet you here and show you how I cut them. So my pants have been unhemmed and I pressed out the crease and there is where I want the fold to be on, you know, where I want the hem to ultimately be folded up to like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure. This is three and a half inches. So I want a two inch hem or an inch and a half hem actually. So I'm gonna do an inch and a half hem. And so I need to take three and a half inches minus an inch and a half, which gives me two. So with an inch and a half hem, I wanna trim off two inches off of my pants, just like this. I can actually go to my sewing machine, set a seam guide up, for two inches and stitch and then cut on the line. Or I can kind of put my pants together just like this and use my rotary cutter and ruler and just cut. There's not a whole lot of a curve on this. I could also draw my line and trim with scissors. But however, you wanna measure from the edge that is the original edge to the new edge that you need to trim, you can do that. So you can see here I'm folding with my creases here and here. And then once again, you know, everything is nice and even. So I'm gonna go back to my rotary cutter and ruler. Just like that. Now it's time to do some overlocking on the serger. So this is gonna be really easy. I've got gray thread in there and I'm using a four thread overlock stitch on my Bernina L890. I've set up for a four thread overlock stitch and I'm gonna sew with the um, outer material on top. I'm not gonna trim a whole lot off, just a little bit of whiskers and then I'm going to 
start kind of on a seam, but you know, it's not that necessary. So lifting my presser foot, just starting punching this up just against the blade a little bit, lowering my presser foot. And then I'm just gonna go for it. And then, cause I'm working kind of upside down, I'm making sure I'm not getting anything underneath, gently holding everything. But you notice how I'm barely trimming anything off. I do have my dust catcher on here. And then I'm just gonna do this, the other leg exactly this way. Now when I get back to where I started, I had to kind of curve in to get started, so I'm just gonna trim that off, just like that. And over so just a little bit, come off, and then I'm gonna cut over on the side of the machine. So I wanted to talk a little bit about some cool products that Clover has. This is called a hot hammer, and um, well, this is the hot ruler. So the hot ruler is used to be able to get like a perfect crease hem. Maybe you're doing uh, straps for a bag or something like that. But they also make a hot hammer and this is the hot hammer. The hot hammer is designed to be smaller so you can fit it in a pants leg. It's got some other little cutouts that make it nice. Like I really like this concave piece and then also there's a rounded piece here and these are for pockets and things like that. So obviously this is a good choice for our pants which have the narrower leg. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my pants leg and I know that I'm gonna do, I determined, we all know this, that we're gonna do an inch and a half hem on these pants. So my inch and a half is this line right here. There it is. So I have my hot hammer inserted inside my leg and I'm gonna line it up with that half an inch line on the hot hammer and just get everything tucked away so it's nice and neat. And now all I have to do, because I can iron directly on this ruler, is give it some steam and press. And then I'm just gonna work this all the way around the pants leg. Once again, up to this inch and a half inch piece. my inch and a half inch piece again. Okay, this was my last one. And so what I'm gonna do is the same thing to the other leg. And then what I like to do as well is once I get everything pressed up with my hot hammer, I get a nice crease then I'm gonna fold my pants leg right along the crease in the front and the back of the pants, tuck everything up there nicely, and set this one more time without my hot hammer in there. So now we're ready to go to the machine. So now that I'm at my sewing machine, I wanna talk a little bit about the feet we're gonna use. We're gonna use a standard sewing foot first, this is our number 1C. The 1C is going to go on just so I can do a basting stitch to help hold my hem in place while I do the blind hemming. This, there's really nothing special about that. I'm going to use a 5 millimeter long straight stitch just so the stitches come out easily. The next foot I'm going to use will be the blind hem foot. The blind hem foot is foot number five, and it has this little guide on the front that's going to help us line our piece up so that we can get that blind hem. And you'll also notice that right in there, see that little bar? That little bar is in there because that's gonna give the loft to the stitch so that when we open up that temporary fold we create, we'll be able to have those threads open up a little bit. And you might think, well, Gail, I have a five foot. I've, I also have a 10 foot. Couldn't I use a 10 foot for this or vice versa? Well, the 10 foot is very similar to the five, except in this case, this is the 10C, and the 10C allows us to do a nine millimeter wide stitch capability, but look, there's no little wire under that place where the, 
needle would go. So you have infinite needle positions on this one, whereas on the blind hem foot, you do have a little bit of an obstruction. So when I'm doing a blind hem, I am gonna use the five foot, not the 10 foot. And just when I'm doing edge stitching, I'm gonna use the 10 and not the five. So an important thing to, for us to do first is to make sure that we have our standard sewing foot on with our stitch length adjusted as a straight stitch. to five to six millimeters long, that's all we need. And then when I line this up, I'm gonna line it up with the serger edge to the edge of my foot, just like that. So right, right along there. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch. And this is just a basting stitch. And then if you wanted a longer basting stitch, you could always use the basting function. And the basting function on this machine would actually take this stitch that we've elongated to six millimeters long and make it 12 millimeters long. I use that more for when I'm basting layers of fabric together than when I'm doing this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut and do the other leg of the pants. I'm gonna use stitch number nine and I'm gonna keep all of the default settings set, which would be making it 3.5 wide by 2.4 long. And if I see that my needle isn't really catching when it pops into that little fold, then I might need to adjust my stitch just a little bit. You might also want to take into account the type of needle that you have. Now, I'm using a very fluffy kind of fabric that is easy to get just a few threads of the fabric there to take a bite for our blind hem, but some thinner fabrics might require that you go to a thinner needle, uh, possibly even a 60 or a 70 uh, size needle, which means that it's not going to work with your needle threader. That needle threader doesn't go into those little tiny, tiny eyes. But just like when you use a thin, thin needle, you're also going to use a thin, thin thread, like a bottom line, uh, silk weight 100 weight thread, or even the uh, seraline thread by Mettler, which is 60 weight. Today, I'm using a 50 weight polyester thread in the top and bottom. And like I said, it's because this fabric that I'm using it doesn't really require that skinny, skinny needle, so I'm using a size 80 today. Now there is a certain way that you're gonna have to fold your piece. Now we're gonna sew on the seam allowance of our blind hem. So that, see how that's curling in? This is our basting stitch in there. So the straight stitch of the blind hem is gonna go right in here. When our needle swings to the left, it's just gonna catch a piece from that fold, just a few threads. So I'm gonna go ahead and like I always do, start on a seam just because, and now I'm tucking my thread under my foot and I'm gonna get, and I'm gonna get my folded edge right up against that little blade of the blind hem, lower my presser foot, and now slowly and surely go around each pants leg.
All right, so after we've gone around both legs, all we need to do is pull out our basting stitches right there. And you can use your seam ripper, but these come out pretty easily. So just, you know, give it a little tug and pull all of those out. But look, once we get those out, you cannot see where my blind hem stitches are. And that's what it looks like on the other side here. You can see the little blind hem stitch right there. All right, you can hem your pants, folks. Well, those weren't so difficult, were they? I mean, it was more about like the prep time and the talking about what kind of hem we want to do and everything that was the biggest challenge. So just don't forget that, you know, different fabrics kind of require maybe a little bit of tweaking on that blind hem stitch. And also uh, it makes a difference the needle and the thread. When you use that finer thread, it really disappears and fine threads require fine needles. But hope you've got something out of this tutorial. And don't forget, if you wanna see more tutorials like this one, or maybe not like this one, don't forget to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's pretty easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and hopefully subscribe. But huh, I'm off to hem a pair of jeans now. So that's gonna be in the lineup coming soon. So don't forget to check that out. Thanks so much for watching and see you soon.